Hi, my name is Lee. This is going to be a very quick video on some similarities between Jethro and Moses. Jethro is the father-in-law of Moses, a Cainite. So here we have, in Hebrew, Ha Torah. This is the Torah. And we'll see that it has the value 616. So in brackets here, we have Ha Torah. 616 and the total matches is just the amount of times that word shows up in the entire Tanakh. So 616 and we know that the Torah was given in the portion of the Torah named after Jethro, Yitro. This is Yitro and we'll see that it also has the value 616. So the Torah 616 was given in Parashat Yitro, or Jethro, 616. What's interesting is, if you look up text again on this, and then you switch it down to only search the five books of Moses, here they are, you'll see that the name Moses also exists uh, 616 times. So the Torah, 616 is the value, the same as Yitro, the portion that it was given. And then the name Moshe exists 616 times in the Torah itself. Interesting. But here's an, another similarity. If you go to Safari and type in seven names, you'll know that it's pretty well known that Jethro had seven names, and one of them is Cainy, which is Cainite. But seven names, and here they are. This is well known. What I didn't know until recently was that Moses is also known by seven different names. So two people who are known by seven different names. <coughs> And then uh, there's one more character who's called by seven different names. It's the Messiah or Mashiach. And here they are, Magnified, Our Righteousness, Shoot, Consoler, David, Shiloh, and Eliyahu. Um, and here is a very interesting source connecting a very young Moses to Jethro. So here is your source. And according to this Midrash, this is where Moses' stammer uh, originated. As you remember, he said he was slow of speech or wasn't a great speaker. Um, and here he says, Please, my Lord, I have never been a man of many words. Uh, and God tries to seduce Moses into accepting his mission for seven days. So there's seven again. We'll scroll down a little bit. Uh, concerning Moses' additional argument that he was not suitable for this appointment, he's slow of speech and slow of tongue. Um, we've been told on this verse that while growing up in Pharaoh's palace, Moses once took the king's crown and threw it on the ground. The king wanted to execute him on account of his misdemeanor. His astrologers, or sometimes I've seen magicians, use this incident to point out that Moses must be the boy of whom they had warned that he would come he would become the redeemer of the Israelites and according to Shemot Rabba 112 Pharaoh consulted his closest advisors who included Bilam Yitro Jethro and Job and these people were uh, advisors to Pharaoh and they show up again later they offered different advice, one saying the boy was guilty of death, the other saying it was a youth, youthful prank not to be taken seriously. They devised a means to test if there had been an evil intent in Moses knocking off his foster grandfather's crown. They placed before him in a bowl, or placed before him a bowl containing both gold coin and a glowing coal. If Moses were to grab for the coal, this would prove that he had not had any evil intention. If he were to grab for the golden coin, this would be a sign that he, 
he was dangerous and he would have to be killed. Moses was about to grab the golden coin when an angel pushed his hand toward the coal and he burned his tongue when trying to taste it. According to this midrash, this is where Moses' stammer originated. So here we have a source that's pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting story. It also shows that Yitro, Jethro, knew Moses since the time he was an infant. Interesting stuff. If you're in, and I've collected about 400 of these sources in English. Uh, if anybody has in any interest in this type of stuff, please let me know. Thank you.